Hello, and welcome to Disappeared the Abyss, episode 5. Tonight, we are talking about the disappearance of Lee Cutler, who disappeared on October 20th, 2007, from Buffalo Grove, Illinois. I'm Jacob, I'm here with Alina, and Alina, I remember this case from watching it originally on Disappeared. Do you? Yeah, I, I definitely remember it. I don't know how my brain decides which episodes I clearly remember and then others I just don't, but this one definitely, yeah, start with me. Yeah, I agree. It's like, I don't remember every episode from the first season, some stand out for me, and this was definitely one of those where years later, um, I'm still curious about it, so I'm excited to be talking about it tonight. So a little bit of background on Lee Cutler. Well, Lee went to Stevenson High School, which was a big high school. I mean, it has more than 4,000 students, and it could be a little tough to fit in, as you can imagine, with a school that big. Uh, Lee's mom would say that he just had a little trouble with it, and it was a little tough. His mom... um, says that he was the kind of person to come over to a friend that seemed sad and poke them or hug them, uh, just in general kind of a jovial person. He met his girlfriend at the time when he was a junior in school, and Autumn was a freshman. Now, Lee wasn't sure what he wanted to do with his future and was not sure if he wanted to go away for college, you know, a kind of common situation to be in for a high school senior at this point. Um, It's a big change in your life and figuring out what you're going to do. So a little period of uncertainty. On Friday night, October 19th, so the day before Lee would disappear, he gave his mom a long hug before he left. Um, He was spending the night at a friend's house and they played video games and nothing really seemed too wrong to the friends that Lee was hanging out with that night. It was pretty normal kind of hangout night that you would have. Now, at his friend's place, he is texting with another friend, uh, a conversation that the show kind of talks about briefly, just saying that Lee doesn't feel like He's able to fit in um, with people and communicate well. And the friend kind of assures him that everything will be fine. Um, They know that Lee can kind of hold back his inner feelings sometimes. And uh, people weren't really sure how he coped with that, not being able to communicate with people very well. Now, one thing that definitely stood out to me when watching was the mom talks about the kind of hug that Lee gives her before he heads out for that night and how it was a little bit longer than someone would normally hug their mom just as a casual hug. Um, and the mom kind of talks about how in hindsight, everything, you know, you read into things more. Um, what do you make of the hug? Yeah, I mean, I think she just, since she remembers that it was a longer hug, then I'll just believe her that that's what happened. I mean, obviously, you could also look at it and be like, well, she knows he went missing the next day and maybe looking back, you overanalyze everything and maybe she interpreted too much into it. But I mean, I have no reason really to believe that. And I'll just, yeah, believe her that that's what happened. And uh, that's sad. But I mean, yeah, at least she got that long last hug from her son, I guess. Right. And maybe a little bit of foreshadowing here, too. Obviously, knowing that this is a disappearance, if you hug someone a little longer, it probably means maybe you're not going to see them for Mm -hmm. a while. Um, So that is definitely plays into this. And we know right off the bat that Lee is kind of someone who is struggling at this point, you know, especially in high school when you're younger, you're all kind of figuring out how to deal with um, your emotions and who you're becoming. But Lee seemed to struggle a bit more than most people um, in just his ability to kind of talk about what was going on inside of his head. It said that he, you know, was really good friends with people and would listen to their problems and what they were concerned about. But when it comes to telling other people how he was doing, he could really struggle with that. Um, did, Did you get that sense, Alina? Yeah, I just was wondering. Yeah, I mean, they talk about him journaling, um, but if you keep a lot of your emotions to yourself and there are a lot of mo- emotions going on you're as a teenager and not knowing wh- what you want to do with your life and not feeling like you fit in, 
I just feel like one important coping mechanism uh, is missing for him if he's really as reserved as several people point out in that disappeared episode. Um, I think it can always be helpful to have people to talk to and um, just feel more understood and not having that. It's just uh, an important piece missing for him in his life, it seems like. Yeah, it feels like, and he can sense this. I mean, they say that he is texting with the friend uh, mm -hmm. female that night at the sleepover and, and saying these things. And um, it doesn't immediately like stand out to the friend that something is off because this is pretty typical for him to do these kind of feelings and she's not very concerned about it. But it does seem a little weird that, you know, something clearly is going on at this sleepover where instead of like talking to the, I think it's two other guys that he's with, um, about what's going on, he's kind of texting this other person saying that he is having trouble. Yeah, and I was just wondering, like, okay, was this other friend his best friend, or why choose her over the people he is with that night, or why not reach out to his girlfriend? Um, I was also wondering if his whole comments and not fitting in or not being able to communicate I guess they were meant like in general that he had issues with that, but was there also something that night that triggered it or that reminded him that he had trouble with that and that's why he didn't talk to the friends he was with. I mean, they said that um, nothing really seemed off, you know, with uh, with Lee that night. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that there's probably a good chance that like something happened that night that triggered it because I don't know why you would text someone and this was pretty late at night I believe sometime around maybe like 12 mm. o'clock or so that they're having this conversation so it was something that was on his mind right then and clearly couldn't wait like you know it was weighing on him and knowing that he's someone who doesn't like to talk about his emotions in general the fact that he was texting someone about them while with other people in late at night seems to me like there was a, a situation unfolding on October 20th, um, so the day after the sleepover, this was a Saturday, uh, Lee dropped off a friend at uh, 10 a.m. And so I'm assuming that's a friend from the sleepover. His mom was already a little bit worried because she didn't um, get a call from him the night before like he promised he would. Um, but she knows that sometimes he would call and sometimes he didn't. Um, and so it wasn't totally... Uh, unusual for him not to call but he yeah she started to worry already a little bit and she kept trying to reach him in the morning but had no luck and at some point um he was supposed to show up at work he worked at a clothing store um part-time and he um didn't show up so his shift started was supposed to start at noon and his manager told his mom that maybe Lee just thought that he was supposed to st start later that day, maybe at 5 p.m. So her, his mom basically tells the manager, yeah, okay, well, as soon as it's 5, like, if he's not there, call me, like, let me know. Um, and they talk, and he doesn't show up at 5 p.m. either. Um, so his mom immediately felt that something was wrong when she learns about that. Um and when Lee doesn't show up at the bowling alley, which he was supposed to meet with the uh, Jewish youth group that um, he usually hung out with a lot, his mom's worries only deepen. Um, she actually is there and like hoping that he'll show up to this meeting, but he doesn't. And so the same day at 9.40 p.m., uh, Lee's mom decide to, uh, decided to call the police and report Lee missing. So I was already, yeah, just wondering what made him decide not to call his mom back because we know she already tried to reach out to him the night before and he was obviously like with his friends, like maybe not super well, but they didn't notice anything was off and he was reaching out, texting with this other friend and so he must have known or noticed his mom trying to reach him and he decided not to call her back and I just... Yeah, I'm wondering what was going on in his mind not to do that. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts. 
on that? Well, nothing really other than, you know, the obvious, like maybe his phone died or something like that. You know, he was mm-hmm. talking to the friend um, late in the like early morning, late night time. But maybe when he was planning to call his mom back in the morning, yeah. perhaps like his phone had already died. He maybe wasn't thinking ahead and didn't bring a charger with him or maybe he, you know, was just not too concerned about it. And his mom had also said it wasn't like super unusual for him to not call even when he yeah. said he was going to. So maybe it was just one of those things where, oh, I'll see mom when I see her and it's going to be fine. Yeah, you're right. It could totally just be that he was like, well, I'm with my friends now. I don't want to like call her back right now. I'll call her tomorrow. And then the phone was dead or something else came up. So who knows really? Um, he disappeared from Buffalo Grove, and this is a upper middle class town with about forty four thousand citizens in two thousand seven when uh, Lee went missing with a h- high rated schools and a very low crime rate, according to police. Lee sometimes uh, liked to take off on his own and just think and meditate. He was also the president of the boys chapter of the Jewish youth group BBYO. And so an investigation began right after Lee's mother called the police to report him missing. And they explained in the episode that the reason for that is um, basically that they think that he may not be stable, that he may be um yeah he may be in danger um to hurt himself because usually because he's already 18 they wouldn't necessarily go search for him right away or um even take this case because he at that point isn't missing for uh 48 hours yet so um but in this case they do decide to take on his case right away um so they check all the places that lee likes to go to they check out um I guess the Oasis, because he liked to go there and talk to truck drivers. He also liked to go um, to a parking garage and just sit there and think. As all high school kids do. (laughs) Yeah, this really stood out to us. It's very unusual, very odd. Um, I don't think I know anybody that likes to do this. Um, Do you? No. It's a really, like, I don't know. I found it an odd thing for him to be doing. And also like so casually the way that they say it. Penny, I think the mom's friend mm-hmm. is the one who says this and just like, oh, yeah, he would like to go sit and chat with truck drivers down at Oasis, which I don't know. I've just never heard of anyone ever having that as a hobby, especially a high school kid. Yeah, who's because he may be purely like kind of... old and retired and have nothing to do. And you also like this place that they have good yeah. food or whatever but for a teenager that's wow that's very unusual but i guess I'm there are like, several things about him that are unusual but this really stands out i mean i get that he like we'll find out he's someone who likes literature mm-hmm. and maybe likes stories and maybe he likes hearing you know what these truck drivers have to say about their lives and some of the people or things that they've done maybe they have interesting stories and that's what he's fascinated in but it just seems it strikes me as odd to see like this little high school jewish kid like going to maybe a truck stop i'm not sure exactly what the oasis is but clearly a place where you can talk to truck drivers um and it just seems interesting for him to be doing that especially someone who seems not to really like to interact with too many people like he kind of has his closer group of friends Mm -hmm. he's introverted and stuff so for him to go out there and maybe he's not like sharing too much about him and maybe that's why he likes it because it's more like just letting them talk we know he doesn't really like to talk too much about his emotions or feelings and things like that but maybe this is maybe he's just a really good sounding board and enjoys letting other people talk to him so maybe and that way I guess I could see it Maybe he also just, since he didn't feel like he fit in in high school that well, maybe it was easier for him to talk to these older people for whatever reason. I mean, I just remember when I was maybe in middle school or high school, sometimes I'd feel like it's easier to talk to adults than like people the same age because you know they're not going to be mean or anything. But I, I, I don't know. That's just like something that came to my mind too, but still very odd. Still something yeah, I don't think sure. many people would have done and potentially I mean not trying to say that all truck drivers are dangerous definitely not but just talking to strangers at like a young age and maybe being a little naive I I don't know I 
I feel a little scared if my child told me that's something I like to do on a regular basis. I would be like, Definitely. okay, who do you run into there? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and um, at the time, he's, what, just 18. two weeks past 18? Yeah. So he'd probably been doing this well before mm -hmm. that and so he would have been uh, like just a minor kind mm -hmm. of out on his own talking to yeah these truck drivers it's definitely like a questionable uh, situation that I wouldn't let my child do if I was uh, a parent or wouldn't want them doing but that is what Lee did um, so they start uh, investigating and trying to figure out what happened to Lee after he seemingly disappears and no one can get a hold of him. His mom's been calling, all of this. And police look into his room and his home and find that he didn't pack for a long trip or anything. It didn't seem like he was planning to go away for a while. Um, Lee's friends also get in on this investigation. They went to the gas station that they believed that he might have went to um, sometime that Saturday. And one of the employees actually remembers that Lee was there that day at around 10 PM, which would have just been hours, you know, before they were talking to the gas station here. Um, so that kind of gives them some hope to know that, oh, he was around here just a few hours ago. But when the family finds this out and they talk to employees at the gas station, they ask for their surveillance video, but they kind of get shut down at the time because they have to wait for the manager to come in and approve this. They were probably just talking with, you know, the cashier there who didn't have the ability to make this happen. Um, and then by the time that the manager comes in, the video unfortunately has already been erased, so they aren't able to actually see Lee on camera. And later they would find out some bad news. It turns out that Lee was at the gas station in the morning, not the evening, probably around 10 o'clock in the morning and not 10 o'clock at night. So he was actually been gone um, for much longer than they had originally thought. Now, Lee, as we've kind of mentioned, he did like to write and read uh, quite a bit, some solo activities. According to his girlfriend, Lee's favorite book was Clockwork Orange, but he also liked The Catcher in the Rye, um, the book Into the Wild, and the Harry Potter series. And what do you make of his choice in, in literature? Um, I know that on the on the episode, there's different people that uh, mention other books as well. I think uh, Catcher in the Right gets mentioned again, and Into the Wild is brought up again. Um, I just thought, I'm, I'm, I watched Clockwork Orange, the movie, and... I don't know how different the book is. I know sometimes books are different from the movies. But that's a very, uh, I don't know, like crazy, but pretty horrible movie and book and the, just the topic it deals with. Um, and for that to be someone's favorite book, also at that age, I find that outstanding. Also, it's like older. And I mean, I, I just wouldn't know if that many people have read it at that age or like, have that be their favorite book so it just really stood out to me and I found that unusual but I guess that's what they bring up in the episode too that he was just uh maybe different from from people like I mean they describe him as a hippie too um and kind of not yeah. from the age and era so maybe this is just uh another part of that yeah yeah it's kind of interesting to hear like Clockwork Orange, Catcher in the Rye, Into the Wild, and then Harry Potter, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, the, there's uh, one would be quite common mm -hmm. among that age group and the others. I mean, they all, I guess, are kind of have similarities or a little whimsical, I guess, maybe like some of them coming of age type stories or like solo journeys or things like that where the characters are a bit different from everyone else. So in that case, I guess I could kind of see um, the interest that he would have in them, but it, it does kind of inform you a little bit about maybe where his headspace was at and, and kind of how he maybe viewed himself and some of the characters. I don't know, but um, definitely he liked to read and write. Now, his mom also described him as a, kind of an anxious kid. He would get nervous about things more than probably most people would, might overthink things a little bit. Um, and this is actually what caused police to 
take his disappearance a little more seriously. You know, he is an adult. He was over 18 when he disappeared, but um, police are more concerned just because they know his background and they're starting to hear about um, his anxiety and nervousness and they want to locate him. He also has a history of depression and has voiced negative thoughts um, in his text to his friend that we heard about, things like that. Uh, so this is also ringing alarm bells for police who are worried that, you know, he could be in danger um, out there from someone else or to himself. Um, Lee's mother believes that he his suicidal tendencies um, were caused by a breakup with his girlfriend. So specifically in one incident, he brought a knife to school and he threatened to kill himself. And this was after a breakup with a, a former girlfriend that he broke up with just because they were different ages and this girl was going off to college and it just wasn't going to work, but it was really hard on Lee. Clearly, he was admitted to the hospital because of this, um, which actually caused a little bit of a rift between uh, his mom and him. He wanted to get out of the hospital, but for his own safety, his mom kept him there for a little while. When he did get out, he continued to see a therapist, but his mom believes that this probably wasn't all that helpful to him. He was just kind of going through the motions and not really maybe participating in the therapy or getting too many benefits from it. And at the time that Lee disappeared, his mom wasn't living at home with him. Um, she was taking care of her mother who had cancer. So we know that Lee had asked her to move back in. Um, and his girlfriend thinks that it was very stressful for Lee to live um alone with his stepfather I, I think he has a brother too but just without um his mother at home lee and his stepfather didn't get along he the stepfather was described as volatile and not a good um, dad by a family friend in, in the disappeared episode they had saved between 500 to 800 dollars they say, say on the show um which were missing because Lee's phone was turned off, police couldn't use it to find uh, where Lee had gone. Because usually they would obviously try and track his phone and figure out where he went. 42 hours after Lee was last seen, his car was found um, 177 miles away from Buffalo Grove at a rest stop by State Highway 33 near the bluffs of Baraboo, Wisconsin. The officer that ran the license plate found out that the um, car is related to a missing persons case and contacted the police department in Buffalo Grove to let them know that they found the car related to their case. Um, nothing about the car indicated foul play. It was parked properly, like the doors weren't open or anything. Um, yeah, just nothing like stood out. Um, they conducted a ground and air search in the area around the abandoned car with uh, over 50 people. And police soon find a makeshift campsite close, I guess, somewhat close to the car. Um, his family identify the, uh, the belongings as Lee's, and it's especially worrisome that they um, find over-the-counter pain medication and sleep aid at the campsite and several bottles of water um, and they don't just find those but they find them empty I think uh, they described that they just find like one pill next to it um, taking both medications combined is very dangerous um, doubling the chance of heart failure and um, the bottle with the sleeping pills was uh, yeah like I said empty and one pill was found next to it according to Lee's girlfriend um, a river, this is the Baraboo River, runs next to the makeshift campsite. Police search the river and um, they do end up finding his pants and his belt. And his pants contained his wallet and identification. Um, the river is full of obstacles so that a body could easily get caught up, according to police. And um, Lee wore pants many sizes too large as a family friend recounts on the show um, and like to take them off uh, with the belt in it and now this now when they find the 
belt and the pants. Uh, the belt's not in the pants, so this stands out as uh, odd, I guess, to family, friends, and family. Um, so I would, yeah, I'm just wondering, like, what could be an explanation? I mean, there's obviously now a lot of information, a lot was just found out, but um, they really talk about this belt and pen situation a lot and find that very unusual. But I mean, I guess I could just, if we're assuming you took all those pills, I don't know that you'd act like, like your normal self or you could have all strange reasons to do anything um, and take the belt off. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Well, I think they found the belt in the pants like five days later after the yeah. first search began too. So who knows what had happened in between that time. Um, I also think if he was taking them off, you know, he would normally keep the belt in there because that's how he was going to keep the pants on. But if you take them off and you're not planning on putting them back mm -hmm. on, maybe you take the belt out, you know, yeah. you're not going to need it to be in the loops already because you're not going to be wearing them again. So perhaps that was part of it. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe he was using the belt for something. Maybe yeah. it had another use. Like, um, I, I can't really imagine what, like a rope or something like that, but perhaps there was some other reason that he needed it. Um, and I don't know that it really helps fill in too much about no. what happened to him. No, it just doesn't seem as un, um, crazy to me as it seems to seem to some people on Disappeared. Um, I just could see many reasons or many scenarios where this would be the outcome. Um, also, I guess I forgot to mention that it was found submerged in the water, which might also explain why it took them a while to find it. Um, and may also have to do with why the belt wasn't in the pants. I mean, I don't, I don't if it got yeah. caught on like something and uh, there was a current. Is that what you say? The current, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Just many, many and explanations seem possible here. The photo they show in the episode two shows the wallet there as well next to the um, belt and the pants. And so they've recovered quite a few of his items at this point. Uh, police also would recover a note that Lee had written, um, and presumably this is to his mom, and his mom in the show says that she has it memorized by heart, and so this is what she says when she's reading it from her memory. It says, quote, My head is too big for my body. Finally, I'll get to sleep. I'm sorry, Mom, that I'm a coward. I love you, Mom. Please be happy. And so there's a number of different ways that you could look at this note that is found. Um, his mother says that this is maybe him expressing his thoughts like he liked to do. He, you know, would get overwhelmed and used writing as a tool to kind of get his emotions under control. I know that when you and I hear this letter, Alina, we kind of see it more as a potential suicide letter mm -hmm. or a goodbye letter um, without maybe saying exactly that. But it, it the overtone is definitely um, that he is not going to be returning to his mm -hmm. mom. Yeah. I, I have nothing to add to that. It's just uh, I think she doesn't read it the same way, but just as being like, outsiders to the situation that's really what it comes across as yeah so police continue to search uh the river but ultimately come up empty of a body or anything to indicate where he himself is other than his items and the investigators say that if lee was in that immediate area that they would have found him and the mother believes that the search was thorough, and obviously police do as well. Um, so we just don't have a lot of answers at this point. But when I watched the episode, my thought was, well, how far did they search? Because I believe them when they say, you know, that they did not find him in the immediate area. But this is a river, Um and it, it could go for a ways if he ended up in it where his clothes ended up. 
Um, so perhaps he went down the river and there are a number of obstacles and some branches and, you know, trees, logs, things like that, um, that perhaps a body could get caught in, but it certainly seems plausible too that, you know, you could end up having the current take you away even further away from the search area and they may just not have found him exactly yeah exactly that i was uh when i read that first yeah i was or when i I guess not read that but when i watched the episode i was like yeah what is immediate how how much did you search it how big was that area um and uh with yeah then i guess assuming or finding out that the body couldn't have gone far in the water i was very curious to see like yeah how how big is this river so I tried to uh, find information on that and I did end up finding the um, spot where he parked his car and uh, the river alongside it and very close by is basically the road um, leads over a bridge over the river and you can check out the river like how wide it is there and it's like very very close to where they found the car and I'm assuming found his makeshift campsite and it definitely looks big enough to me I'm not an expert that it, but that it could have uh, also that the current could have taken his body further and further away. So, um, and I mean, it doesn't even have to be in the water if we like wonder why they didn't find the body. There's all um, ways of just many ways, uh, possible ways that it could have gone down. Like if we assume that he took uh, all this medication, that maybe. He did think, yeah, I'm going to go in the water because they did find the pants in the water. But he could have also thrown them in the water. He could have felt hot. He could have felt like, oh, my whole body feels weird. He could have walked for a while. Like, I don't know how long he could walk taking this medication. But it just seems like he could end it up somewhere in the wilderness, just not close enough that he wasn't in the so-called immediate area. And they just missed him. And this happens in so many cases. They go back and search the area many years later and do find a body in areas also that have been searched before multiple times. So who really knows? I'm not sold on the he's not out there anywhere idea. No, I'm not. I'm not either. And it's not the end of the investigation. Police will obviously still try and trace his last known whereabouts and figure out how he got there. Um, They also look at the car, and they find typical stuff for a teenager, school papers, clothing, candy wrappers, things like that. They also found an admissions ticket to Kettle Moraine State Forest in Wisconsin. Uh, So this gives them some clues as to where he was that day, um, earlier in the day. They do a little digging and find out that for residents, the entrance fee into this state forest in Wisconsin is $7. If you are from another state, though, it's $10. Um, And Lee only paid $7 according to this uh, admissions receipt that they find. And so police consider whether or not maybe he was traveling with another person, possibly an in-state resident, who was able to get that discount for the park. Now, I don't really subscribe to this theory. I just don't think there's any other evidence of that other than that um, receipt that they have. I think there's, you know, potentially other reasons that he could have paid $7. Perhaps, like, it was a system where it's kind of like the honor code where you just say whether you're you're an in-state resident or not. Um, and they just go with that. Maybe you don't have to actually show an ID. It's not really clear. Or maybe, you know, he didn't have, for some reason, enough money, and they were just let him go with the cheaper price. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, he was young. Like, I could just see someone be like, oh, you don't have to pay the full price, you know, Um, assuming or knowing that people that age may not have that much money, but thinking, like, well, they still want to go visit the park. They should have the chance to. I... Yeah, I I mean, they have to investigate in different directions, so I get why they're considering that maybe there was another person there. There's just really nothing else that indicates that, so yeah, I'm assuming there's another reason for that. 
the other nail in the coffin, so to speak, is when they find a receipt from a Walmart in Madison, Wisconsin, and they go back and look through the surveillance footage, and sure enough, it's Lee alive and by himself at Walmart four hours after he left Buffalo Grove. Um, in the video, he was wearing the khaki pants that they found in the river. He was also wearing the yarmulke, which they also found um, near the, the river as well, near his uh, makeshift campsite. The car is found with the gas tank almost empty at the near the campsite, even though he passed several gas stations on the way. So police and the family are speculating about whether he ever intended to come back from this area, knowing that he could have got gas, but never did. Uh, in the car, they also found the book Into the Wild, which we mentioned earlier. So why do they think he knew where he was headed? I think, I mean, they talk about him, um, yeah, knowing where he was headed, I guess, because his car ran out of gas or was out of gas where they found it. And also because he kind of went there and like, and straight went when they're straight it's all like on the way um the places he passed through but i i was wondering that like i put down that question when i watched it i um i could see it being planned but i just don't feel like we know that for a fact this going this direction or going straight and then running out of gas like that could have happened just by coincidence or i was wondering too like why well, because at this point, we kind of, like, there are so many hints and indications pointing towards suicide, and we can talk about that more later. But um, I was just wondering, like, why visit this other state park before and um, by the entrance? Like, you know, why go there? Was he maybe trying to find a good place? Like, obviously, didn't want to be anywhere close to home. Maybe didn't want his relative or any anyone he knows to find them, want to spare them off that. Um so trying to find a good place for for ending things and maybe he was just that's what i was thinking like going to this park and maybe he was considering that to be a good spot and then but then being like oh maybe not and like yeah just continuing on until he ended up where we found where the car was found in the makeshift campsite so if you think about it that way it wasn't planned like thoroughly through you know so I was just, yeah, curious why they really thought it was all planned when I watched it and they say that, um, because I, I feel like we don't know for sure, but yeah. Oh yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, Lee's girlfriend believes that Lee is the kind of person that could easily survive in the wilderness, and uh, this also really stuck with me. I think you remember how exactly she phrased that. Um, but I was just like, wait, why would you think that? Do we know, do you know more that we know that he's this pro in surviving skills that don't get mentioned anywhere? Because I don't think it's that easy to, to live in the wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. She says something along the lines of he would be fine with a, a like a twig and a leaf basically for yeah. shelter. Um, which I took to mean that maybe he didn't mind like an outdoor life but I didn't necessarily think that means he had the skills to live mm -hmm. outdoors you know we know he was kind of a hippie uh he was more spiritual I'm sure he did enjoy being outside and like would have been fine with that but I don't know that it doesn't seem like there's any indication that he was an outdoorsman or really you know had the skills to somehow make mm -hmm. it in in the wild and then another topic is brought up by his cousin. So the section of the Torah that was assigned to the day, October 20th, when Lee disappeared, encourages people to go out on the road and search for God. And the first line reads, if you uh, translate it to English, And God said to Abram, Go for yourself from your land, from your family, from the house of your parents, to the land that I will show you. And... We've talked about this, or we have, I guess, similar thoughts on this. Uh, it does seem kind of like a weird coincidence at first that that's what it would say for the uh, Torah that day. And we know that um, Lee was religious and then turned towards religion often. But um, I, yeah, we just wondered, like, how many days is it 
written in a way that um, it might also sound like mysterious or fitting. For... You mentioned it's kind of like a horoscope, yeah. which I think is a really good way to put it. Yeah, who knows? I mean, I'm not trying to describe a religion as like a horoscope, but I, I just mean um, it could other phrasing may also have sounded mysterious or it may have matched the circumstances. So uh, who, kno who exactly. knows? Exactly. That's kind of how those things are written, right? To be interpreted mm -hmm. so that you can kind of see yourself in that. You know, it doesn't have to obviously be the Torah. It could be um, the Bible, the Old Testament, or anything where, you know, you're meant to look at it and, and get your own message out of it. Um, and I think that could have applied in this situation too, you know, maybe he, maybe he did look at that and maybe there was some influence there or maybe he didn't. I really think it, yeah. it doesn't really have maybe too much bearing on what ended up happening to him. Also, it would only make sense if you really believe he, uh, kind of also, well, like being close to the angle of the Into the Wild book, if, yeah, if you believe that he just wanted to go on this adventure then they would fit even more. It would fit with the book. It would fit all with that angle. But we have so many indicators that that's not really what happened here. So, yeah, who knows? Um, there are other theories to what happened, too. Some believe um, that Lee is in Israel to join the army, um, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Army, um, Lee wanted to go join the IDF after graduation. At least he had brought that up to his mom. And they welcome non-Israeli residents. And um, his mom and him sat down one day and ordered information online on this program. But his uh, mom never got anything in the mail about it. She states that Lee always came home before she did and got the mail. So who knows, I guess, is what she's indicating there that maybe... He got the information on it and just never showed that to her. And in 2005, um, so two years before he went missing, uh, he was in Israel for his cousin's wedding and loved it there. So family, friends also followed leads um, to shelters in Nevada, but never heard back, never, um, nothing ever turned out, I guess, from that. And it just... Uh, it just seems very unlikely that he'd be in Israel. Um, I mean, you'd need a passport, you'd need a flight ticket. How would you do that without ever leaving a trace? Oh, he's just 18, he didn't have that much money. It, to me, in my mind, there is no way that that's where he's I gone. I agree. Yeah, I think it's very unlikely. I think that's out of all the options that have been laid out I feel like that's probably the farthest fetched one I can mm -hmm. see why they would you know perhaps consider this it's not like totally out of the realm of possibility given that he had expressed expressed interest in this before he's been there before um you know family members had been there and moved there so certainly it was a place that he was thinking about in a potential option for him after high school I mean this is someone who had admittedly said, I don't really know what I'm going to be doing after this period. And maybe that was, you know, something that he was considering and would have given him some stability and matched his faith. Like, I think it would have been a possible option for him, definitely. But as far as whether th that actually happened, I think that's like the least likely scenario. Yeah, and I liked what um, you brought up about this too. Um, when we talked about it earlier, you said that um, his mom didn't seem to completely be like, well, no way you can't do this. Like they sat down together, they ordered brochures. Um, so it sounds like, yeah, if that's really something he wanted to do. He could have gone and done that after high school. And then why not wait out a few more months and just yeah. go do that? Um, he didn't have to run yeah. away to do it. Yeah, exactly. Um, something else that I thought was interesting is um, how much money they found in his wallet. And it kind of ties in the idea with like, would he run away? Could he go to Israel? You know, um, we know that he spent some money to buy the medications at Walmart, but he, they were 
found that, you know, five to eight hundred dollars was missing from his room. So if they found money in his wallet, which they did find, how much was in there and was any Mm -hmm. missing? We don't at this point, I'm not able to find any information that really indicates um, how much money is still missing or not missing. And that could help us figure out, I think, if he made additional stops along the way and there just weren't receipts for that. Um, could that give us any clues about what happened to him? Did he take it with him if he did go off somewhere? You know, did that get him a bus ticket? Um, you know, we were not far from major highways. Did he hitchhike and then find a ride and get a bus ticket or something along those lines? Um, I think that could definitely help fill in some of the pieces. But I also imagine that investigators would have looked at that and hopefully figured that out and maybe nothing came of it. Yeah, and just after all this time passed, and there are unfortunately no updates in Lee's case, uh, it just seems very unlikely that he's out there and alive and living somewhere and just ignoring his family and friends forever. I know there's cases like that, but there are very few, and uh, we don't have that many indicators that would point towards him just breaking all ties with his family he had friends that he was close to apparently he had a girlfriend and a mom that really loved him and also publicly you know cried in front of cameras and i don't think many people could see that and decide never to come home i mean yeah i guess you could assume he never saw that but just we have so many indicators that point towards that one um that one thing being suicide i don't know what do you think yeah i totally agree i wish in some ways that they had been able to find his body just to give closure Mm -hmm. to his mother um who as far as i know is still kind of holding out hope even from some articles from you know a handful of years ago kind of saying that she still has hope for that moment of him kind of walking in the door one day Um, And I think that must be so hard to um, have that with you the entire time, that uncertainty, that kind of hope, but it just doesn't seem like that hope is um, rightfully placed, I guess. So we have a little announcement to make. Um, With the next episode on Disappeared, it would be the case of Maura Murray for us to discuss. And... You may have heard of her case. It's uh, very popular. Um, There are many documentaries, podcasts, on it, books, lots of information. And we have just decided that we are not going to discuss her case because there are many great sources on the case. And we'd rather you watch or listen to those. Um, One that I really want to recommend is uh, from the True Crime Garage podcast this is episode number 152 but this is just part one so there's more and more and more they have done several episodes on the case and then if you really like the case and want to have more information there's also a documentary called the disappearance of maura murray that came out in 2018 um and i think you have another recommendation to make on her case too Yes, so off of the documentary that was made, there's also the Missing Maura Murray podcast, which will answer many, many of your detailed questions. There are a lot of episodes that I've just recently started listening to, um, which really get into the nitty gritty details. They do case overviews. Um, It's the producers of the documentary, so they also do interviews. They have recordings of people that they've talked to that are familiar with the case. Um, There's so much information out there of course there's like message boards and websites and people have really taken to this online so there's lots of places you can go but i think those are are three of the main places that you could start um with the true crime garage episode with the documentary and then if you're still wanting even more you know there's literally dozens of hours of um the missing maura murray podcast that you can go through um, and get information there. And of course, the Disappeared episode. Um, You know, if you haven't seen it yet, definitely go check out that episode of Disappeared. Um, That 
as far as I know, sparked a lot of interest originally in the case and is what sparked some of these documentaries and podcasts on it. So definitely go check out the original episode as well. With that being said, thank you all for listening. Until next time. Bye.